All right. Hello, everyone. Good evening and warm welcome to this another session with us here at Eddie Sports um, Dab the Meet the Team events, um, which forms part of a series of events that we have been doing um, over the past few months. And we are so excited to have you join us um, for this particular session as well. Um, warm welcome to all of you, wherever you're joining us from, and good evening. Um, you might be joining from another time zone, so it could be either morning or afternoon, but wherever you're joining us from, um, we give you a warm welcome. Um, if you can permit me to quickly share my screen, um, then we can start. But then to get us started, um, my name is Lawrence Wachidankwa, and I am the ed Education and Research Manager for Edusports. I'll be your host for today, um, but then I'm not doing this alone. Um, I'm doing this with other lovely, amazing um, persons who are on the Edisport team together with me. So um, quickly, I'll give them the opportunity to introduce themselves, and then we can pick it up from there. And so um, I would start with Vida. Vida, you introduce your yourself. Tell us um, what you do at Edisports, and probably just one word that describes um, how you feel um, working with Edisports. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Vaida Kunedo Ajeman, and I work as the Ignite Equity Coordinator with Edge Sports. So, one word to describe how I feel working with Edge Sports is purposefulness. Yeah, thank you. Interesting. Thank you very much, Vaida. Um, I'll move on to the next person who is a noble catalyst, Janet Osua Karikari. Um, Janet, if you can hear me, kindly come off mute. Um, introduce yourself, tell us about your sports briefly, and also uh, one word to describe how you feel when you volunteer with Edgy Sports. Janet, are you with us? Okay, um, I think Janet is not with us. So quickly, I'll go to Kat. Um, Kat can come off mute and introduce herself and tell us one word. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining. My name is Kat, short for Catherine, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer, recently appointed after working with Eddie Spots voluntarily for the last 10 years. And one word alongside Vida's of <laughs> purposeful, which is a great one, I would say that I am inspired on a daily basis by all the catalysts across the network. Sorry, that was lots of words. The word is inspired. Interesting. Thank you very much. Um, probably I should add my word. Um, not too difficult to think about, but I say um, I feel impactful. I don't know if it's a good word, but impactful, yeah, because I always have that feeling that I'm doing something great. And um, today happens to be World Menstrual Hygiene Day, and um, we're particularly excited that we are doing or we are bringing you into this space for you to understand one of our strands and the work that we do to champion um, menstrual hygiene and also empower females in several ways through this particular strand of ours. And I'll, I'll go into further details as we go through the session. Um, but then quickly, yeah, so that's my... Um, handsome face. Moving on, I'll start with um, a bit about edgy spots, um, just to give us a bit of context about what we do. Probably it's your first time um, watching this, joining us, um, and you're just asking yourself, what is edgy spots all about? And for some people, um, they normally confuse um, SPOT with SPORT. Um, but then just to give a bit of context, is SPOT, which is spots. And um, that is derived from the Ghanaian um, notion of what a drinking pub is. In Ghana, we normally call our drinking space a spot. And so on the premise of having a drinking space in several local communities, why not have an educational spot? In other words, a learning space where young people can um, go, have fun, and also grow. You know. And so our mission is to connect, train, and equip local catalysts to drive community-led change. And we believe that local communities have the power to shape their own futures. And um, that defines our vision um, 
of society and where we want the world to be, a world in which communities are uniting to create the sustainable futures they want to see, but using the means or the medium of education. And on that note, um, talking about our sport model, um, and don't forget, I've already said that when we talk about the sport, we are talking about a learning space. Um, just to streamline our work and ensure that we are hitting um, major aspects that drive our impact, we have what we call the dream spot model. And the dream spot model is that future picture of where we anticipate or expect all our communities who are rallying and putting their strength and assets together. Um, that is where we envision they will get to. And so um, our dream spot model is divided into three key areas. And that has to do with the sport leadership, where we focus on um, the capacity of the volunteers or our catalysts to be precise, to drive the change that they want to see and ensure that we are investing in them to be able to do this. Keeping sports safe. Um, this aspect of our sports model focuses on how well we can ensure that our, our learning spaces are inclusive, and they are areas where learners feel safe, protected, are confident to express themselves, um, and also takes into account all the factors, risk factors that will ensure that wherever they meet or wherever they are having their learning activities is void of any um, possibility of harm, right? And finally, the educational equity component of our dream sports model um, focuses on the key activities or learning activities that takes place within our learning spaces. And I'll touch on that um, going forward or I'll go in into more details going forward. But then apart from that, we have three main programs um, for our catalysts. The first being the Ignite program, the second being the Catalyze Leadership program, and the third being the Peer Mentor um, or the Peer Mentoring program. Um, the Ignite program is the umbrella um, program for our educational equity um, aspect of the Dream Sports model, which I just mentioned. And I'll go into further details going forward. But then just to give um, a bit of context when it comes to the Catalyze Leadership Program, that, that, that program um, provides our catalysts um, the training they need to be able to lead a change that they hope for in their communities. And through this program, we put our catalyst on a five-day residential training program. We've recently had one at Almina. Um, and after that, after we've trained them, we give them opportunity to have access to grants um, that will enable them execute their own projects together with their local communities. Our peer mentoring program also um, is a path for our catalyst to be able to impact on the wider um, um, network. And so we give opportunity for our catalysts. We give them the training they need to be able to um, impact on the wider network. So they, they don't only think of their communities or themselves, but Friday, then they also, explore, they also explore ways of impacting the wider network. Now, in terms of our strengths, and I've already mentioned that the core aspect of our dream sports model is the educational equity components. And so these are some of the um, learner strands, um, or these, you can think of these as educational activities happening within the sports. The first is educates. So our educate strand focuses on early, early years education. So you can think of the child's holistic um, development when it comes to um, education. So numeracy, literacy, their um, psychomotor skills, and so on and so forth. And we foster or leverage on play-based approaches um, to be able to do this. And this particular strand is targeted at learners between the ages of, um, let's say, six or five to about eight years. Um, in, if you are familiar with the Ghanaian context, you'd say kindergarten to primary three. The Edulate Club focuses on literacy and how we can do that creatively for our junior high school learners, targeted at age groups from 12 to about 15 years. Um, so you can think of active citizenship in, this, in these clubs. You can think of how that we can challenge narratives, um, most importantly, doing literacy in embodied and practical ways, fostering a love for reading and promoting 
um, reading culture in various communities. Then the Eco STEM strand is a strand that focuses on environmental sustainability, um, but then also as an element of how that science can be done in practical ways. And so in the Eco STEM strand, um, you would find that our learners are leveraging on local resources and how that they can connect these concepts or local locally relevant materials um, and relate that, that to understanding scientific concepts. Our sport leadership strand focuses on um, the professional development capacity of the volunteer. And we believe that as a catalyst with edu sports, you are not just given, but then you are volunteering your time um, as a process of developing your own professional capacity to develop your own community. And our sport leadership strand focuses on how well we can advance our sports management systems and also deepen our community engagements. Now, the final strand, which is the Ignite Equity strand, and for which reason we have all um, assembled here today within the space, um, I wouldn't want to go much, I wouldn't want to go into much detail because that's that's the main reason why we are here. And so, um, yeah, I'll, I'll reserve the better part uh, until another time. But then, yeah, so that's it. Today is Menstrual Hygiene Day. And um, as an organization today, if you've been following our work on social media, you'd realize that almost all our strands or almost um, the Ignite Equity strand in particular, I beg your pardon, or um, communities that have signed up for this strand are doing a lot of activities to observe or commemorate the importance of the Menstrual Hygiene Day. And we've had some of our um, spots um, embark on activities related to good menstrual hygiene management, access to quality menstrual products, um, educating the girls on period and even including the boys as well, and then um, how well our sports can be period friendly or how well we can demystify um, stereotypes and menstrual taboos and so on and so forth. And on this um, international or world or day that we commemorate menstrual hygiene, we believe that it's a good time for us to discuss what we are doing through the Ignite Equity Program. And on that note, um, I think it's a good place for me to hand over to Kat Davison, who is our CEO, you've already heard from her, to take us through um, the next session. Thank you. Thanks, Lawrence. So to give a little bit of context on how our gender equity work started, I think it's important to go back to a key part of the EduSpots model that Lawrence already touched upon, which is that we focus on community leadership. And this means many different things in EduSpots, but I think one thing that it means in terms of our programs and in terms of how we've developed the SPOT model is that every single point, it's been the communities themselves, meaning the catalysts in the communities, the learners and community members, as much as we can get them involved, have been the ones who've determined the course of action in terms of our program design and our wider system for educational change that we've developed. Um, so if we actually go back to maybe 10 years ago, um, maybe eight years ago, uh, I think Eddie Swartz was officially founded the first spot in 2015, which is nearly 10 years. We were at a point where we were often visiting communities, and this isn't, this isn't me necessarily, team members were visiting communities, and the communities themselves were reflecting as they looked around that the spot committees that were overseeing the spots and quite often the volunteer teams themselves were often dominated by men. And obviously in terms of gender equity, there are so many different dimensions to the, the ways in which gender equity practices can take place. But I think representation and just simply the balance of people involved in a spot is gonna be such a key factor in terms of how the learners are supported and whose needs and desires and aspirations and dreams are represented. Um, but talking to the spot committees, um, it's important to say that they were all actually in favor of trying to involve more women in different ways and themselves coming up with great strategies, such as having inclusive meeting times or trying to think about which women they could involve in what way. Um, but rather than um, kind of impose a particular structure or strategy for the spot committees, um, we decided to let the spot committees themselves decide their composition and whilst encouraging them, it was sort of coming from themselves how they might include more women. We avoided kind of prescribing that there should be a certain number of, of women at this point, although we do our school spots to, to include female representation um, whilst not a requirement as a suggestion with strategies to support them. 
But whilst um, sort of developing these thoughts in terms of leadership with communities, it became clear that there was a sort of another whole strategy of how to involve women. And we decided to work with African Science Academy, which is a remarkable school for gifted um, young female students who've just finished senior high school who attend African Science Academy for one year to um, engage in maths, physics and further maths A-levels ahead of going on to science and engineering and computer science university courses. And I happened to be working in the school at the time and I was so inspired by the leadership qualities of these remarkable young women. And it was already clear that they were such role models for their communities and they all had desires to go back and change their communities using the skills and knowledge and talents that they'd acquired through the support they had. That we decided to come up with a change maker grant um, in fact, our first Changemaker program that maybe today is the Catalyst program in partnership with the school where every year we funded three Changemakers from the school who were all women to have the opportunity to create a spot in their community. And this has led to just some astonishing female leadership across the network. And I think we've all reflected that this is a really positive way of um, showing the, the key strengths and talents of, of leaders by infusing the network with remarkable leaders such as Nimitu, who's captured on the right, who set up a spot in Savelagu, who's now the peer mentor for the Catalyst Network as a whole, and Gertrude on the left, who set up a spot in Dulagu in northern um, Ghana in Bolgatanga, who's now our EcoStem coordinator. So we also have a strong focus in the staff team with over 50% of our staff team um, being, being female. So it was always clear sort of as EduSpots developed that we had this strong focus on promoting female leadership while of course being inclusive in, and thinking about equity and the way that we do that. And over the years with African Science Academy, I think in total we've had 12 students set up spots through this partnership. And it's been incredibly effective, particularly seeing the role model that these girls who are challenging gender stereotypes around STEM in their communities as well, going back, setting up spots and leading these programs, building a team and um, being right at the center um, of their communities. And it's always amazing to see these 18 year old students, um, female students who might typically not be in leadership roles at that age and with their gender in, in some of their communities, bossing around the local carpenter or getting the local district assembly to support them. And it's just been such a brilliant strand of our work that we hope to continue to develop in different ways, whether through a formal or female leadership program strand or just through the way in which we offer differing support to different um, genders in terms of leadership. It then came, I think, in 2022, upon talking to Catalyst, which is a key part of how we work as a staff team, is that there's constant engagement with Catalyst and WhatsApp and phone calls and visits, that it came across as a really strong desire from a large percentage of the communities that they wanted EduSpots as a core central team to develop a gender equity program for learners that focused on female empowerment. And it was particularly in response, actually, especially appropriate to mention on um, and on World Menstrual Hygiene Day, that many girls in the communities were struggling with menstrual hygiene and staying off school, linked to other um, social vices that they mentioned. And they wanted us to develop with them a program that addressed some of the challenges girls in particular were facing. And this led to the development of a working group where 15 women and men from across the spot community started to to design what was then the Ignite Girls program, which focused on female empowerment themes. And um, it's, I'm pleased to say that Janet, who's with us today as a catalyst you'll hear from later, was part of that first working group alongside Gertrude and Nimitu, who are captured. And this working group led into the Ignite Girls program, which we managed to get funding for last year. And after a really successful year that you'll hear more about from Vida and the rest of the team, this year we've decided to transition into gender equity again. This was something that was determined by the network who pushed for girls and boys to be both included in not only addressing the challenges faced by girls, but also by boys and exploring the sort of gender specific challenges that are being faced across the community. So that's the evolution of our Ignite Equity we call it work so far but we're definitely not at a finish point and we really welcome in this process and in this um, session today any ideas that you all have for the development of this work in the future as we know we're not yet experts in this field or I'm not sure who can ever be an expert in gender equity given its complexities especially with the culturally responsive and community-led model that we have. So back to you Lawrence after a bit of a, a bit of a long-term view on the journey we've been on. Thank you very much, Kat, for providing this very insightful background. Um, it's good to hear the narrative and how that the strand was birthed, and um, which 
um, is inspirational in itself, um, looking at the impact on the ground at the moment and how that um, communities themselves own this particular strand and are making it yes. Um, Stanley says, wow, I mean, this is so wonderful, great presentation and insightful. Um, the chat box is asked to use. And so um, if you just joined, welcome. Feel free to make a comment. Feel free to um, ask any question that you might have. Of course, we'll give um, opportunity for you to ask a question. But then if um, it's a person question that you feel you are going to forget, please do all to put it in the chat box and I'll take note of that. The next person or the next panelist is Vida, who is our Ignite Equity Coordinator. If you've not heard from her, there's a time for you to hear from Vida. Vida, over to you. Hi, Lawrence. Thank you so much. And for everybody joining us, it's a pleasure to have you here. Um, like you've already done the introduction, my name is Vida, and I joined EduSport this year as the Ignite Equity Coordinator. And it's been an amazing journey filled with a sense of purposefulness, knowing that we are actively igniting equity in communities. So the Ignite Equity Program, um, our very aim is to promote self-confidence of everybody. And by everybody, I mean whether you are a boy or girl. Like Kat already mentioned, there has already been initiatives to support girls, but we noticed that the boys also need support. And that is why now we, we are forming a club of both boys and girls. And in our activities and trainings, we are hoping and we are aiming to build sustainable community-led solutions. So one amazing thing about Edge Sports is that everything we do here is community-led. We have people in the communities actively working to drive these changes that I am here talking about. And in our Ignite Equity activities and programs that we do, we are creating a safe space for both male and females, both boys and girls to thrive. And then we are providing them all the support, all the um, knowledge, everything they need to collaborate with each other and see each other as peers. So if you're wondering how our activities are run, or if you're wondering how the program or the club is like, this is just a snapshot of everything we do. So the Ignite Equity um, Club is made up of boys and girls between the ages of 12 to 15. So we have, in Edge Sports, we have sports. The sports are educational sports in various communities. So in Ignite Equity alone, we have like 26 sports. By 26 sports, I mean 26 communities all over Ghana who have Ignite Equity clubs. And in these clubs, what they do is that um, they organize activities, monthly activities, weekly activities that they take the, the club members through. And you don't need to be a school to be part of um, Edge Sports. You could be a community and they still have a sport. We know that most of our sports are school-based, but we have also communities that um, are part of us. And in our programming, we have monthly Zoom sessions that we do. So just like we are doing here, um, we have Zoom sessions we do to build up the capacity of club leaders. We call them strand leaders, strand leaders to implement the activities that we run monthly. And every month we have particular activities we run that we call challenges. In these challenges, they have well laid out activities that they carry out in the sports. So I can already mentioned, we have 26 incredible communities that are part of us. And if we could draw a map and spot everywhere that these communities are, you realize that we are all over the country. So today being Mestra, World Mestra Hygiene Day, we have activities going on all over the country, in the northern region, Ashanti region, everywhere. Communities and sports have come together to ensure that we are promoting a world-friendly period for every girl. And then we are not doing this alone. We are involving the male figures in our communities and the boys as well. So what do we do to achieve our aims? We have peer mentoring. So I am the Ignite Equity Coordinator, but there is a peer mentor, that is Zainab. So Zainab work is to mentor other, um, other catalysts or volunteers. So every month we have check-in calls that Zainab places to check in on them and find out how they are doing and provide them well-tailored and specific support that they need. 
We also have our national and regional conferences that we organize annually, bringing together everybody, giving them the opportunity to network, learn from each other, and then make them feel like they are not isolated because it's easy to feel like you're isolated when you are in your corner. But once we come together and we're all sharing ideas, you know that you are not isolated. Our WhatsApp community, it's, it's an amazing platform that you will love to be on. We discuss everything in very interesting manners. The volunteers share updates of everything they are doing and it will wow you to see the activities and efforts that the volunteers are putting in to achieve gender equity. So these are some of the things that this year we are focusing on. So I'm just going to draw on what we are doing this month, that is me. We are having a period project lunch. So the sports already came up with their sustainable period projects. Sustainable period project because we noticed that um, period poverty is not just going away by providing sanitary pads one time. We need a sustainable plan. So most of the sports are going into social enterprises to raise um, sustainable income to drive um, okay. their period projects. And today the <laughs> land is going on to where um, we have healthcare, healthcare professionals and other stakeholders coming in to support them. Our activities also just encompass the whole and the holistic development of both the boys and girls. So one um, interesting thing that we are going to do in June is the career development, helping them develop their career, helping them realize their career interest, helping them analyze their strengths and weaknesses right from the start. So that you don't wait till they get to the university before um, they start to wonder or ponder on what they could do. So how do we ensure that there is quality in the work that we are doing, especially taking into account that it's a remote organization? How do we ensure that we are hearing from them and how do we ensure that they are actually being empowered? Okay. So these are ways that we ensure quality in delivery. We give feedback for every catalyst and every community that um, submits our monthly challenges. We ensure that we are not just providing group support, but also individual support. So whilst they submit the challenges, we help them identify what they could do better and also try as much as possible, not just try, we always celebrate their achievements so that they feel confident and empowered to independently implement their activities. And also we, we collect um, impact stories from them. It's amazing to know what they are doing and we wouldn't just want what they are doing to remain at their communities, but it's important for us to broadcast what they are doing, the successes they are having, so that the world knows that these are the activities that we are doing to ignite equity in Ghana and make sure that we are breaking the gender stereotype. So this is the impact that we've observed. So from 2023 alone, we've been able to reach over 538 girls. And you're seeing girls here because, like Kat mentioned, the program was initially for just girls, and this year we are transitioning to um, both girls and boys. So we've reached over 538 girls across 23 communities. And this year, the, the impact is even increasing because now we've We've moved to 26 communities. And the girls that um, were part of the Ignite Girls program, some of the feedback we've gotten from them is that being the Ignite Equity Club has made me a post, has created a positive change in me. Some of the girls who graduated from the Ignite Girls programs are still um, interested in being part of Edge Sports program. They are reaching out to express their interest and even how they can support the Ignite Equity Program. So our plan is to make them mentors for the Ignite Equity Club members. Yeah. So these are some interesting quotes that we've gotten from the learners. And these are just a few of them. These are just a few of them. You would, you would really want to read our impact stories. You would want to see the submissions that we are getting. And then just follow us on our social media pages to see more of the impact that we are achieving.
from the Ignite Equity Program. So we will just let you enjoy this short video about the Ignite Equity Program. It will just give you an idea of what happened during the Ignite Girls. Yeah, so you can just imagine what will happen with the Ignite Equity now that we have boys with us. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Vida. Um, sometimes you want to hear from the horse's own mouth. So um, it's, time, it's time for you to just fasten your seatbelt and uh, enjoy this wonderful video that relays the impacts of the United Girls program um, from last year. I hope you enjoy this. When I was not here, I was afraid to speak uh, in public. I was I wasn't having the confidence to speak, but Madam Pierre made me to speak in public. We do engage parents to get the feedback from parents how their walls are inferred. And this feedback is so amazing from parents themselves. The change, especially in our girls. The strand that we call in our girls has to do with girls' club, where these girls have mentors who are mentoring them through leadership skills and confidence. In short, or to just make the girls, the girl child, the proverbial and an active and good citizen. When uh, we started the Ignite Girls, educating them of um, abstinence, of menstruation, of um, personal hygiene and other things, a lot of things. We have taught them a lot of things. Now, you know, we have seen that the children are open. They can come to us and share their problem with us, whether men or even the women. These children are very... But last time we met during the um, menstrual project, uh, that means the PAD project, we invited their parents. The parents came in number. We discussed a lot with them that we should draw hands to help these children. But if you look, if you, if you look carefully on the gallons, you will see that the girls, while they were producing the soup, everything has been displayed on the gallon. But most of the girls offend themselves from school. When they are in their menstrual period. So you use part of the money to buy pad, three boxes of pad to distribute it to our girls. And we left some of the money to invest in this project that we can manufacture this liquid soap and sell so that we can sustain the period uh, project. The pad for the girl child. So if you buy a disposable bolo every month, you will get sanitary pad. Thank you. We saw a, 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 a reusable and sanitary pad. That day, it was amazing. I like that day. Yes, I use it. It was good. I like it. I have been involved in the stereotype, the gender stereotype, and it was amazing. I like that. They were saying that girls are weak, and we believe that we girls are not weak. Madam Thea wants us to express our confidence level and, and prove to the world that we are not weak. We can, we can make it. Violence is a treatment, outrage, or something that causes injury or harm to another person. And there are forms of violence. We have sexual abuse, incest, female genital mutilation, widowhood rights, child marriage, Philia and men. We should focus on the men more and the women too much. We should give more opportunities to both of them. And what men can do, women can do better. And what men can do, men can do better. Thank you. So we are pleading from the elders, teachers, and everyone to help us to stop violence against women and against the men. Thank you. What should you do? You shout. How would you scream? <laughs> Do you see in your communities or societies that shows that there are what harmful traditional practices? So I'll give one example. An example is female genital mutilation, where 
now the clitoris is being cast out. With this instant, the person can bleed severely and the person can lose her life. Madam Thea, he asked some um, career members to come here. The nurse was there, and teachers was there, and a veterinary doctor was there. They encouraged us that we should be um, bold to what the um, decision we made. That if you are going to, you said that you are going to be a surgeon, be bold to that. What towards that um, goal of yours? It is so easy task to take the road travel, but at the end of the day, application is working. Remember the most interesting stories are not those who had it easy. We rise, we fall, but what is important is that we find our inner strength to stand tall. Women, know your value, wear your crown. Female empowerment is a must. On behalf of the Ignite Girls Club members of Inkonia, we say a very big thank you to Edu for providing the good price. Thank you. Interesting. Um, so I've watched this before, but it's as though I've never watched it. I mean, um, it's evoking a lot of emotions, um, getting to see. And please, I hope you can see my screen. Am I back to the right slide, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, feel free to use the chat box. Um, Stanley is on fire from Zambia. He says, fantastic. Um, some of our catalysts are on the call. Um, feel free to, um, and of course, wherever you're joining us from, just feel free to put a comment in the chat box about how you're feeling at the moment, just watching this or listening to the girls. Um, for me, it's very emotional. Uh, it's a very emotional time because, um, you know, I, I, can, I can just imagine the impact and the experiences and the encounters that um, we are taking them through as a result of this particular strand. And so... Yeah, kudos to all. Um, moving on to the next person. Oh, no, you are not playing again. All right. So I'll hand over to Kat to take us um, into impacts. Um, yeah, so Kat. Thanks, Lauren. So just to follow up a little more on um, some of the ways in which we've been looking to understand and learn from the amazing changes we've seen across the network through the Ignite Girls program now, Ignite Equity. Um, I thought I'd firstly just, just reflecting on that film, Lawrence, I think I'm also <laughs> feeling emotional as I, I was so fortunate to be able to be part of making that film. Um, and so was able to have the opportunity to work with Ago, who's our um, voluntary filmmaker um, to create that film. And I think one thing that we really hope comes across through that film is that Ignite Equity or Ignite Girls, and in fact, EduSpots as a whole is truly something that's been created and is owned by the catalysts themselves. It's not something that's like come in from outside, um, like a kind of parachuted alien dropped into a community. The, the reason why this program is having such a clear impact is that they have helped design it, that every single um, aspect of the program has also been community integrated in different ways, which I think really came across through that film, that it's not just that the learners are spoken to about period poverty by a catalyst, but at every point, the parent, the community, the wider context feeds into how the sessions has designed and the way that Vida and her team and Jocelyn last year develops all the monthly challenges, leaves room for flexibility for the community to decide what the best way is to communicate a particular thing within their context. Um, also just reflecting, looking at so many of the learners captured there, how many of them are becoming catalysts, as Vida said, so many of them that were once um, learners are fast, like demanding to become catalysts and are coming to our conferences as the future change makers. And we often think in edgy spots, if we've got 10,000 learners across the spots today, about 2,000 across all the clubs, imagine the ripple effect that that will lead if they quickly become the catalyst of tomorrow. Um, so just to express in more formal terms some of the ways in which we're looking to measure the change, which is so complex with a very holistic and wide reaching program such as this that is often cited by the community members themselves as the most impactful or the most um, 
yeah, maybe treasured strand perhaps because it has so, so many wide stakeholders engaging in it. Um, we look for ways to measure the short term and the long term changes. Also looking at how we can create an effective monitoring strategy such that all of our interactions with learners and catalysts feeds into the live development of the program. Um, but one thing that we've done to try to measure the change in a more quantitative way is that we've worked with Impact Ed to use their monitoring tools to use surveys that use validated measures through a set of questions that aim to test change over time. So last year, between April, the start of the Ignite program and December, we did some significant studies um, with, I think, I think it was between 70 and 100 students enrolled in this program. And we looked at um, a range of different measures, including well-being and, and um, goal orientation. And this year, you can see here, we're looking at school engagement, civic engagement, and self-esteem, which are things that the community members and catalysts and learners themselves wanted to measure. And this year, we're, again, measuring, I think, a much larger group of about 300 learners and looking at the change um, in their attitudes in these different areas over time by having them take the survey at one point, calculate an average score across the cohort, and then look at them at another point and calculate an average and then see the percentage change. And then we're at the same time doing this with Catalyst across the network as part of our core um, monitoring and evaluation of the entire Ignite program, where we're looking at self-efficacy, that ability to, um, I guess, know that you can affect changes and have confidence, citizenship, goal orientation and teamwork. And we also do a lot to collect different types of qualitative information, whether that's through survey responses, whether that's through semi-structured interviews. Of course, it's part of the ongoing relationships. And we've also been collecting stories of change, often using the most significant change approach. And there's an impact report coming out soon where we'll be able to share much more detail. Um, this was the study we did last year, which interestingly actually showed relatively small changes compared to what we saw on the ground. Um, in EduSpots, we're always keen to show the full information and not just cherry pick the information that we like, but we did see a positive increase in terms of the well-being measure, um, which increased by 2.2% on average and 1% in goal orientatedness. Um, but for those with an interest in monitoring evaluation, there are lots of reasons for this, including the scores being relatively high at the start, as I think some of the learners might have thought it was a test and that meant that it was more difficult to show change over time. And also, obviously, there are lots of other factors that might affect their well-being um, that are beyond our control, or it might have been the point at which we got them to take the survey, that there were factors that made them feel a little bit less happier about the situation and all these factors that come in. Um, but we we are using a range of me methods to explore. And there were some learners who increased their well-being by 20% under their measure, but it was kind of balanced out by the other scores across the network. Um, yeah, I think that that's the key information on impact evaluation. I think maybe the final thing to say is that we're organizing an independent study or we're planning to for the year ahead. And we're looking to do a much more widespread um, information gathering and analysis process using independent evaluators. Uh, and we'll be sharing more details of that in the months ahead. Back to you, Lawrence. All right. Thank you very much, Kat. Um, and um, at this juncture, I think um, you've already heard from Madam Janet through the video, uh, but then um, now we get to hear from her um, in more depth. Okay. And so um, Janet Ousua is a catalyst at Amaya Sports. Um, we would invite her to tell us a bit about her sports, the problem she observed, um, how that her sport has benefited through the Ignite Equity Strand, um, What's, what initiatives are they taken this year? Because then they um, participated in the strand last year when it was Ignite Girls. And so this year, um, with the introduction of boys, um, what do they intend to do? And so Madam Janet, um, I call her Madam Janet, <laughs> but then she's probably known as Janet. So um, please come off mute and share with us. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening to everyone. I'm Janet Ousia Kakarui from Amia Sports. I migrated from Sakasaka. I joined Eddie Sports in 2019. So when I came to Saka, um, Amia last year, we put in an application and we were given the nod. And um, I'm here to present to you the, the Sustainable Period Project. What's Amia? We have done so far and continue to do. Uh, in a mere sport teaching, we observe the following challenges in the sports. 
we saw that girls were assenting the results from school during their period or their menstrual period or their menstruation. So during menstruation, most of the girls don't come to school. And most of the girls do not know the time of their menstruation, the time that they menstruate. Some cannot afford sentry pad or menstrual materials. So they opt to the use of other materials that are available to them, such as wraps, toilet roll, papers, and even menstruating their own panties. And then we also saw that they were having poor personal hygiene. Some were having body odor and the rest. I, I know those, some teachers can attest to that fact. And the lack of confidence, their self-confidence and self-esteem was low. And um, with this, Amir has also benefited from the Ignite Girls Trans. So Amir Sport has benefited immensely from Ignite Girls Trans through training sessions. And some of the benefits include the following topics. We treated personal hygiene practices. Example, bathing and brushing at it twice a day in the morning and evening, washing their clothes regularly, changing their undergarments, removing their pubic hairs and so on. And the menstruation and menstrual hygiene, we tackled that one into details. We also um, benefited from sexual harassment, career awareness and career choices. Sexual transmitted diseases that, or infection, that's the STIs, and teenage pregnancy and its effects, abortion and its effects, gender equality. These are some of the topics that we pass the student through. So the monthly challenges that we led Amir or Ignite Girls through has helped the girls improve in keeping themselves clean. We also um, benefited from distribution of free pads from every spot. They have also become aware of dangers that leads to sexual harassment. So the girls now know the appropriate channel to contact when they are being harassed. They have been also learned how to keep themselves well so no one can harass them. I mean, our virtuous ladies, as we call ourselves, we took part in all the activities of um, the monthly theme and challenges of the Ignite Girls. Because of that, we're given opportunity to apply for a grant for menstruation or the menstrual period projects. So we were given a note and the grant was given to us by Edispo. Thanks to uh, Ms. Kat and the team for supporting us. So we used part of the money of the grant to buy pack and distribute them, distributed them to the girls. And parts, we invested them in the period projects in the form of liquid soap making to sustain the projects, the period projects. And since then, we have been preparing and selling liquid soap to sustain the period projects. We sell our soaps, our soap in the school and the community that we live. And some of the teachers and catalysts buy our soup to use. And then few parents also buy some. And also have um, sellers in the school market. They also buy some for us and, and those around. As catalysts of our major sports, we saw that the money that was given to the sport to buy packs for the girls could finish. And we may not have money all the time from every spot um, to support these girls, to buy part to distribute. So we thought it wise. Why not invest some of this money so that we could support the girls with parts whenever the need arises? We thought of so many things, but we all agreed to invest part of the money in making liquid soup. That is why production of liquid soup has become a sustainable income project for Ameo Ignite Girls. So, so after selling the soap, we use the profits to buy parts for the girls. 
and reinvest the rest of the money in soap making production. And um, for this project, I can say so far so good. There has been a tremendous change in the girls of Amiyo Ignite Girls Club. There has been improvement in girls school attendance. Their self-confidence has been improved. Improvement in their personal hygiene. To be frank, Kamas tells you, now if you come to the school, you see that yes, now the girls, they are dressing nicely and their appearance is very good. And they are poised in whatever they do. So they are able to carry themselves well in public. And I can, I can say boldly that um, our girls are poised when it comes to interacting with their colleagues, teachers and other people around. At first, it was Ignite Girls. Now that boys are involved in the Ignite Equity, we want to broaden the scope of the period project to focus on personal hygiene, gender equity, and equality to foster good interpersonal relationships whereby respect is given to each other, whether a boy or a girl. We are to respect each other's views, giving each other equal platform opportunity to operate and enlarging Amiel Sports Enterprise with the addition of Tick Bridge after wash and then um, Parison, which we have already started producing. Yeah, so now when it comes to Amia Sports, we are not having only liquid soap. We are having Tick Bridge, we are having Parison, we are also having um, After Wash. So after using your soap to wash your things, you rinse it with After Wash. Or if you have some stains in your dress, you can use the uh, Parison to just remove the stains. And your bathroom, your, your toilet facilities, your kitchen, your floor, you can use the thick um, bridge also to clean your environment to have a nice meal in your home. So involving boys in the enterprise to break down menstrual myth and then make them more supportive. And this time we are not going to concentrate on only the girls alone. We are planning to also buy some uh, underpants or um, bosses for the boys or singlets, those boys who can afford so that they can also have interest in the Ignite Equity and they can also express themselves very well and effective. So thank you for giving me a platform. Awesome, thank you very much, madam. <laughs> Yeah, um, thank you very much for your time and also for this presentation. Um, I know we are far behind time, um, but then I know that Amayao is doing some incredible stuff. And of course, um, who knows, maybe we'll be coming to you um, to make some wholesale uh, of the yeah. Sobolo and Tick Beach. So um, stay yeah. tuned. Um, thank you. Yeah, and of course, Amayao is in the spotlight today. We encourage you to support them. Um, um, support their enterprise as well and it's good to hear that this year the boys have been factored in terms of the profits that it will be accrued um, from the sale of your items so um well at this point i would open the floor for questions that you might have um you can put it in the chat box any reflections that you might have um, you can put that in the chat box as well um if you have any question there's a time um for you to come off mute, um, you can also use the hand signals or the, um, the emoji, and I'll be glad to call you. Should I see this? Um, while we wait for questions, I would want to find out. Um, I think I'm part of the panel, but um, probably let me find out from Kat. Um, how you think um, our, our strand is complementing government's efforts or the mainstream or school curriculum 
um, how are we doing something different or is it complementing um, the schools in, in what ways or in, in what areas of our strand, uh, of this strand, the Ignite Equity strand and the work that we are doing? In what ways is it complementing government efforts? In what ways is it improving um, government's work or the school-based curriculum? Or what are we doing differently? This is to me. Um, I'm going to say that on this particular topic that we have an intern who's doing a, a whole research project exploring the government approach to gender equity in schools and looking exactly answering your question. So I think I, I'm going to take the opportunity to get more informed on exactly what the gender equity landscape looks like across, across Ghana in terms of the work ongoing in schools. I'm wondering if Ida would like to offer more comments on this. I can say in terms of our general approach to education that all of our programs in different ways aim to build on government aims, that all of the things that we're trying to do in terms of promoting gender equity, having more girls in schools, addressing period poverty, building confidence, challenging stereotypes, um, improving learning practices to ensure they're more inclusive in different ways are at the heart of government strategies. But Vida, I'm wondering if you want to add a little more on in terms of what you've seen as I know you've worked as a, you've worked in a spot, <laughs> in a school, and you're probably yeah. best equipped to tackle this one. Yeah. So I know that in our educational policies, there's been a lot of um, effort to ensure that girls, especially those in underserved communities, have access to education. So there's been a lot of girls, um, girl child education activities. Um, there's been a lot of initiatives addressing early marriage. And so I know that everything we are doing at EduSport is just supporting every policy that the government is has and every effort that the government is already making to ensure that girls have um, access to quality education, not just education, but quality education, yeah. Interesting, and I think just to also add, of course I asked the question, but then I have some opinions to share anyway. Um, so I think, I mean, every school also is required to have a girl-child coordinator. Um, and so, I mean, looking at Madam Janet, who is a teacher, a GES teacher, and participate in this program, I believe that that opportunity to your skill set to be able to even um, know how to implement those kind of pedagogies that we use to facilitate the club activities and also kind of being part of the network as a GES teacher and how that actually draws your attention to key themes um, pertaining to girls and boys um, and issues around their lives and how that you can better improve on that. I think it's it's an area that we are actually also supporting governments in, um, giving teachers that opportunity, which is, I believe, is rare um, in, in our mainstream schools. So, yeah, kudos. Um, Charles, your hand is up. We'll give you the opportunity to ask. Yeah, good uh, evening. Thank you, Lawrence, um, for the opportunity. So my, my question is, is this program limited to learners in remote communities only, or is open up to um, other learners in urban centers? Because there are chances that there are learners in um, more developed communities who are also going through these challenges. So do your organization have plans for these learners in more developed communities, but do not have the enough resources to um, practice personal hygiene? and all the good things that um, this particular program has to offer. Interesting. Thank you very much. That's a good question. I would let Kat answer. I think you <laughs> would also be well equipped to answer this, this one, Lawrence. I guess um, this is a question we often, often face, and I think this is a, a key reason we we're leading some of these Meet the Team events is to gain further support awareness for our work so that we can bring more schools into our network. So the way EduSpots works, all of our programs run at our spots and we have limited capacity as a relatively small organization for the number of spots that were developed. And we also want to make sure that all the spots and the teams we're working with um, are really getting the quality of mentorship and program support rather than just trying to roll things out at scale across multiple communities. As the way EduSpots works, we really generate this 
um, strong, not just sense, the strong reality of community ownership of the spot, which does take significant time and mentorship to make sure the spots are set up effectively. So at the moment, we're kind of gradually adding around 10 extra spots every six months into the network. And in terms of your great point around um, different types of community, we've typically focused on rural communities because we simply because we have an open application process. And those are typically where the teams who've applied to us have come from, because I think they often do feel many of the challenges that we're addressing in a much more raw sense, whether it's about the basic access to book provision or whether it's about some of the challenges faced by both boys and girls specific to their gender. Um, so the answer is, um, yeah, anyone looking to apply to join the EduSpots network as a whole, that we, we will be reopening applications in about six months time, um, but we don't open our programs beyond our network of spots. But we hope there are many learnings from the way in which we run our programs that other organizations might want to adopt, particularly in the way in which we um, feed in no strong notions of community ownership, as well as looking to learn, of course, from many other organizations who we've built our model from in different ways. I hope that answers your, your question, Charles, but definitely agree that these are issues that don't just affect a, a certain type of learner in a certain location. These are universal. And in fact, I think I was looking at statistics today that show that um, a huge percentage, I think it was 49% of, of girls in the UK have struggled to buy period products across the last year. So it's not a, a, a situation that solely relates to um, typically underserved communities. Interesting. Thank you, Kat. Right. Charles, thank you very much for joining and for asking. Um, so in brief, as I always tell Catalyst, with, even within the network, the key word is apply. So yeah, just apply and um, give us a convincing reason why you have a strong sense of community ownership uh, um, and believe that you would be an incredible add-on to the network. So yeah, basically that's it. Um, there's a question that I'll direct to Vaida, and that, that question is, have you had any challenges with involving boys in these clubs? So Vaida, you say something briefly, and then I'll ask the same question to Janet and then draw the cat. Okay. So yes, um, at the initial stages, we definitely had challenges involving boys in these clubs because um, in a normal Ghanaian school setting, boys are not really put in clubs. They are running, playing football and all. So the challenges were there, especially um, when it comes to the scars and sensitive issues like menstruation in the face of the boys. The girls also had a little reservations. But these is, um, are the reasons why we set up Ignite Equity to ensure that uh, we are comfortable discussing some of these issues and boys and girls are also comfortable um, learning together. So we did have some challenges, but we are working actively to ensure that the programs we are running are mutually beneficial. So they are not just centered on girls. Um, if we do it like that, then the boys would have no reason to sit in the class. But we are ensuring that the boys also have benefits from the program. So like today, today um, menstrual world hygiene, world menstrual um, hygiene day, I've seen most of the sports buying boxer shorts for boys. Boys don't menstruate, right? But we are actively trying that in everything we do, we make sure that the boys are benefiting here. Madam Janet. Thank you, Vaida, Madam Janet. Okay. Um, Namia Sports, we started at the scratch, including the boys. But when we started touching the menstruation aspects, we saw some giggle in these boys. But later, we made them understand that um, menstruation is part of the woman, no matter what. If the woman doesn't menstruate, that means you can't give birth. And everybody wants to also have children in the near future. And we asked the boys, if um, they marry to a woman and the woman can't give birth, what would they do? Say, hey, I'll just ask her to go. They brought up so many questions. So later, as discussion continues, the boys accepted it and that even the boys were contributing to the topic. Yeah, that's what I can say so far. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think from the feed engagement, one of the most beautiful things I've seen is one student or learner trying to learn, a, a, a boy trying to learn how to fix the sanitary pad. And, you know, I was like, wow, that's, 
maybe I should have this experience for myself. I mean, for future purposes. Anyway, <laughs> that's just my even way. um one of our videos, uh, one of the boys were explaining demonstration with her sisters and other things. She, he was told to tell at least. So I think it's good. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just the fact that they must come to realize that it's part of um that pro process of womanhood, right? And being good advocate for women as well. Um, if they if it, and that can only happen if they have that experience and are able to share in their joy. You know, it's such a joy to be a woman. Um, how do you? How can you support our work? Um, we are by this um session inviting all followers of edgy spots um and anyone um within the network out outside of the network to support our work um if you support us we are able to do more we are able to grow we are able to empower our catalysts um to be able to design their own initiatives and lead their own change and so to be able to do that you can make a donation um everything thrives on funds right and so um, you can make a donation to Edgy Spots. And um, if you want to do that, you can contact our CEO, Kat Davison. Her um, email is rightly displayed on the slides. Um, you can reach out to her to discuss funding opportunities and um, we'll be happy to receive you and to hear from you. Um, apart from that, or beyond the donations, you can actually um, engage in our events. Um, if you joined this session, um, you can share the link, you can um, share the video recording when it's ready with anyone in your network, any organization who you believe might be keen on supporting our work. Um, apart from that, you can also subscribe to our newsletter. If you go on our website, www.edgespot.org, um, you would have this pop-up box um, directing you on how to subscribe to our newsletter. You can also share content on social media, Twitter, Instagram, um, Facebook. you find us there. You can always share the link. Um, and yeah, support our work in several ways. And so at this point, I would want to thank all of you for joining this particular session. We hope it's been insightful and informative. And um, we hope that you spread the word. And we also hope that you'll be a good advocate um, for girls, for boys, um, you'll be a good advocate for inclusion wherever you find yourself. Um, so we'll meet again in the next Meet, meet the Team events. Good evening. All right. Have a good evening, everyone. See you. Have a good one too. Bye. Thank you for joining everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.